Dreams. Consider the power of dreams. Dreams are what activate us at a soul level. Dreams are our awakened purpose. Dreams are the inner flames in our soul, our inner light that's meant to be shared with the world. All great things are born from dreams. Dreams have birthed innovative technology, music, art. Dreams are the things that this life is made out of. But a lot of us don't work on our dreams. Why is that? It's because we've grown accustomed to following the norm. And when we continue on this path, we eventually lose our individuality. When we follow the norm, we eventually become the norm. Usual, typical, and standard. And our dreams get lost in the process of conforming to norms. Norms keep us in our comfort zone. And that is the dangerous part. Because when we're limited to being confined to the parameters of a norm, we're not unlocking our creativity. We're not forced to think differently. We're not testing our true potential. We remain usual, standard, and typical. Our society has many different norms, and to name a few, we have social norms, behavioral norms, gender norms, but the norms I want to focus in on today are occupational and cultural norms. What end up, ends up happening to a lot of us is our family, friends, the media, they project ideas of what a successful career path is, and they start telling us who we should become. And when that happens, we don't even get the chance to dream for ourselves, And when we don't get that chance, how can we dream big enough dreams to make other people's lives better? How can we dream big enough dreams to make this world a better place? I'm here to give you a sense of urgency on the importance of dreaming big and relentlessly chasing after your bigger dreams. I'm going to be sharing my story to disrupt and to activate the norm breaker in you. I'm here to start pushing you to your yes when it comes to your bigger dreams. Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Aguilar and this is my story on the power of norm breaking. I'm a Filipino American who grew up in Cerritos, California and I was raised by two parents who immigrated from the Philippines. And like many other immigrants, my parents came to America with the American dream to start a new life, to build a new chapter of success, and to take grasp of every opportunity that they wouldn't have easily back in our homeland. Coming to America for my parents meant that they would be the pioneers in our family to pass down a higher quality of life. And that meant setting my brother and I up to receive the best education making sure that we take grasp of every opportunity that would lead us to a successful career, and then making sure we manifest that successful career. But the thing is, is in my culture, there are only four occupational paths that are considered successful. Doctor, lawyer, nurse, or engineer. And for anyone who follows one of these four career paths, they're given automatic respect, and they're considered very successful. It's a cultural norm for Filipino parents to show their love to their kids by aggressively pushing them to follow one of these four career paths, which is exactly what my parents did. But if I was being honest with myself, none of those four career paths ever really fired me up. Instead, I felt very pressured to follow something that I knew already deep down that I didn't want for myself. But I wanted to be valued. I wanted to be respected by my parents. I wanted to be considered successful by anyone in my culture. And I thought the only way that was going to happen was if I followed my cultural norm. It's normal to listen to what other people tell you to do. It's normal to pursue a career just to have a career but norm breakers. They have the courage to rise above the usual, standard, and typical way of this kind of thinking. 
I remember learning about occupational norms as early as kindergarten. I was five years old. And I remember sitting through career day through a nice lineup of adults who talked so passionately about their jobs of being a firefighter, policeman, businesswoman. And my teacher, she turned to me and asked me in front of the whole class, Catherine, so what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> so did I become who my childhood self hoped and dreamed of? Am I proud of the career path that I chose for myself? Did I choose my career path or did I let someone else choose for me? Well, I'm not who little Catherine hoped and dreamed of. No, not even close. I am so much more. The old Catherine was defined by all the rules and the cultural norm that held so much power over me was actually a passed down way of thinking that to be successful, one must become a doctor, lawyer, nurse, or engineer. That was passed down to my parents and then passed down to me. And it was completely suffocating because my cultural norm of what success meant was no longer just a perception. It was my reality. I entered Smith College as an engineering major. And when I left the house to go to college, my parents were so proud of me. They would gush to all our friends and family that, oh, our eldest daughter just left the house and she's very well on her way to being a successful engineer, just like her dad. I tried so hard, so hard to fall in love with the idea that I was well on my way to becoming a successful engineer, and I tried so hard to love all my engineering classes. But no matter how hard I tried to fall in love, and no matter how hard I tried to love my engineering classes, it wasn't my truth. What I really wanted to major in was environmental science and policy. Smith gives you this thick book in the beginning of your freshman year, and it's filled with all the classes you can ever take. After completing a full day's worth of engineering classes, I would go straight to my dorm room, flip open this book, go straight to the environmental science and policy section, read through the classes, look up into my ceiling and daydream. <sighs> How amazing it would be to actually sit in on one of these classes and love what I'm learning. Then, my mind would wander to how cool the professors of these classes were. So of course, I would go stalk them on LinkedIn, go on ratemyprofessors.com, do a general Google search. And after falling down this rabbit hole, I'd get a rush of guiltiness over me. And I'd quickly close this book, throw it under my bed, and snap out of my wishful thinking. If I already knew that engineering was not the career path that I wanted to pursue, then why was speaking up for myself? Why was breaking my cultural norm such an intimidating thing to do? One of the answers to that question is because when we break norms, it requires us to break a pattern and to create a new routine. Norm breaking requires us to finally start thinking for ourselves. And if I was going to break my cultural norm, it was going to require me to be the first in my family to speak up against the passed down wisdom of what success meant. And I didn't know if my heart, gut, and intuition were going to lead me in the right direction. But that wasn't exactly the scariest part for me. The scarier part was that I knew, I knew my parents came to America with a big dream the American dream. And my parents truly invested everything they had in me because I was their American dream. I represent every hope, ambition, and idea of what America represents to my parents. And if I was going to break my cultural norm, I was going to need to take some big risks of my own in creating my own path to success. And I didn't know what I was going to do with a, ma a major and a degree in environmental science and policy. 
would I need to go to grad school? Where would I go to grad school? What kind of job would I get? Would I be able to sustain myself? And it was just a never ending list of questions because I was about to venture down a totally new and unfamiliar path. But one thing I did know was that pushing myself past the familiar, pushing myself past my comfort zone, and truly following what I wanted was what was right. I mustered up the courage to come out to my parents that I wasn't going to be the engineer that they hoped and dreamed of. Instead, I was going to major in environmental science and policy and see where that was going to take me. Breaking my cultural norm to this day has been one of the best decisions that I've made for myself because once I broke my cultural norm, I was finally able to discover my true strengths, passion, interests. I discovered that I'm a leader, a strategic thinker, a creative analytic, and I have a deep passion for public service. My bigger dream is to engage in public service beyond the boundaries of my own community. I'd like to be able to fully utilize the skill set that I've worked hard to cultivate over the years of translating technical policies and technical processes into public engagement strategies that create transparency and inspire the community to take next steps in making this world a better place. My norm-breaking journey led me to some amazing opportunities that I never in a million years thought I'd ever have. I was one of the select few chosen as a White House intern under the Obama administration, and I got to serve as one of the president's scheduling and advance interns, and I later went on to serve as his public engagement intern. And then I also was able to be the first in my family to get to go to study at an Ivy League, and I completed my master's at Cornell University in public administration. And that led me to completing fellowships at the United Nations, the Environmental Protection Agency, and it's just all so crazy because I used to be the small town girl from Cerritos who was so scared to break any kind of rule and stray away from the visions and the plans that other people had for me. But had I not had the courage to break my cultural norm, I would have never discovered these strengths, passions, and I most definitely would have never had these opportunities. Choosing to be a norm breaker is not easy, but it's worth it. Because once you free yourself from the chain of a norm, you start to discover your higher calling and you realize your power within. And once you embrace this kind of freedom, you start to evolve into the person that you were truly created to be. There are three key ingredients to succeeding as a norm breaker. Passion, persistence, and patience. You first need to identify what your passion is early on in your norm breaking journey because that's going to be your guiding light. So instead of asking yourself, what is my passion? Break that down a little more and ask yourself the simpler question. What makes my heart flutter? If someone were to ask me, what is my passion? It's public service. But if someone were to ask me, what makes your heart flutter? What makes my heart flutter is being able to connect with others by serving my community to make this world a better place. See the difference there? I need you to dive to that depth. The second key ingredient that you're going to need to succeed as a norm breaker is persistence. As a norm breaker, you're going to experience severe pushback. You're going to experience moments of doubt. And because you're different, people will bring you down. But norm breakers, they have dreams that are bigger than the lies and the severe pushback that they receive from people. Norm breakers choose to press onwards towards their dreams because their dreams have always been bigger than themselves and their dreams are worth chasing after no matter what. And the third key ingredient that you're going to need to succeed as a norm breaker is patience. As a norm breaker, when you identify your bigger dreams 
after identifying your passion, that's going to call for pursuing those bigger dreams. And that calls for manifesting the extraordinary. And that's certainly not an overnight process. I promised myself that I'm not going to let norms define me. Instead, I'm going to dream big and relentlessly chase after my dreams because my dreams for a better tomorrow, a better world, they're for my family, for you, for our future. I'm calling you to join me on this remarkable journey of being a norm breaker. Dare to dream when the norm says it's impossible. Dare to dream when others live in doubt and despair. I'm asking you to be outrageous, audacious, and brave enough to dream big. Dream so big that your dreams are unbreakable, unshakable, unwavering, non-negotiable. I'm asking you to join me in rising above the usual, standard, and typical. And together, let's dream big. Thank you.